Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. It's going to be a uh, maybe a 15 minute update uh, on the layout. I've jumped the gun here and decided to work on uh, two of the three curves. I used my curve uh, radius tool to draw all three of them out. And I forgot to set the camera up and record because I said in the last couple of videos I'd show you how to do it. But I'm still going to show you how to do it. But I'll just show you what I've been working on here for a second. And uh, I think I might go ahead and lay this curve. I got a couple of uh, pieces of flex track here. I'll probably lay the second curve and just kind of show you how I do it. And uh, I'm sure everyone's got their own way. But this is my way, so I'll show you that one. So the reason I jumped the gun on this was because... Uh, here's my swing gate and I wanted to make sure that I got this part right here um, set up so that it's, it's flush. Come on Zoe. I'm not alone out here and she's not very helpful. She just gets in the way. But I want to make sure this gap is right. Now you can see in the camera already or on the screen that the track on the right if I get my finger in there. Where is it? These two rails are just slightly lower than the ones on the left. So I'm going to have to fool around with that. And uh, probably just use a couple more pieces of cereal box. For all those people wondering why I got a stack of cereal boxes in the back room. Uh, cut some cereal box in and build up the, uh, the bottom underneath the ties here. And get it to... Uh, become flush it's not not too bad but this side is 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 significant compared to this side this side ain't too bad oh my god well that's what you get for coming in here i'm not going to open up the door and let you out every single time you run in here and i'm doing something so i ended up realigning part of the the main line on the left um, you can see it's not perfectly straight, but it's okay. Um, I think that the trains will roll over it pretty good. Uh, the track on the right side is uh, the yard lead. Um, it will run around to the opposite corner where I've uh, built the bench work to. Way over there. Uh, essentially, what it's going to do is look like double track, and I can use it as double track if I wanted to. Um, for those of you that are new, this is your first time watching. The track that was on the right is now on the left, right here, and it will go to the yard. So if I really needed to uh, run some trains and pass each other, um, I could run it down through number one track and then up the lead and on this uh, east extension is what I'm calling it. And then it'll go around to the main line to the, to the station and uh, uh, connect back into it and then turn back into single track but i really have been pondering the uh expansion and contraction of the the rails out here since there's no heat or air in this big room uh stop as you can see this side here this this is tight i actually went through and i filed it down a little bit it was about 90 the other day and uh, the rails expanded just enough where they were touching. So I just filed them down just a hair. And I, I think they're good. They're pretty smooth to the finger as you go across there. Um, this road bed here on the back, I still have to put track on there. But that track is running down the whole left side. There's not even foam over there. You see that big green piece down there, that monstrosity mock-up mountain I got down there. If it focus. And uh, then it goes around into that corner. But... I just wanted to uh, to test all this stuff out and start aligning the track. Uh, if you don't remember from the last video, this first curve is a 44 inch radius, 46 inch radius. And this last one, if you can see the blue line there, is a 48. Um, all my curves on my layout are 42 inch radius or larger. The sharpest curve that I have is a, uh, a 36 on, a, on an industrial spur. If you remember from last week's video, the, the line that comes up grade, uh, up to 3% grade, uh, it will have a 36 inch radius curve. But once again, it's not a main line. So we can deal with that. Now the sh absolute sharpest curve on my layout 
is a 24 inch radius that goes into uh, tunnels and army depot. And there's restrictions that go along with that sharp curve. You know, certain locomotives aren't allowed in there. I have a couple of number four switches that went same thing, you know, only certain cars are allowed to go through the switch and you have to hang on cars when you work that industry down there and spot cars up. So yeah, I will show you how I do my curve radius tool and then I will install these two pieces of track just so if you're new and you've never done it before, you can see how I do it. It might help you out some. So this is my curve radius tool. All it is is a one by two. And if you're in America, you know that a one by two is not one inch by two inches. It's like three quarter inch by one and a half. Um, hopefully anybody who's watching overseas, you don't have that kind of problem, but we do. So what I've done is I measured it out. It's about 52 inches long or so. And down here on the end, I've got holes drilled. I believe these are three eighths inch holes. And uh, this one, these two only go, you know, partial way through. The end of the marker sticks through the backside but I wasn't happy with that. And since I'm not using those sharper curves no more, I went ahead and I drilled these out and the entire marker fits through there now and quite snugly and it works out pretty good. So normally I use uh, the Sharpie uh, fine tip markers. Once again, it just fits right in there. Just shove it in, it's pretty snug. And then it's usually about half inch sticking out the bottom. And uh, I will show you what I do next. So on the back side here, I just got another piece of uh, uh, one by two cut and nailed in so that it's secured and this locks into my tripod. Come on now, fit in there. There we go. Let me see if you can see that now. You can see the marker at the other end. Uh, I specifically chose red so you can see it. So basically all you do is put that where your uh, your track center line is. Measure from this point here, your center point, over to where you want your track to be on that side, If you're going to, depending on the, the radius you're going to use. And this is the easiest part ever. You just twist it. Now, this is a cheap-ass... Uh, tripod so it goes back and forth quite a bit so whenever i do this i have to make sure that i'm holding the uh, upright piece here to the back and i just monitor it the whole way around and it gives me pretty good results it's not perfect um when you have larger radius curves on your layout it don't have to be perfect so the tolerances are a little bit higher versus if you have a sharper curve if you're working with a 20 inch radius curve you don't want it to sharpen up to 18 inches or 17 inches or something like that because there is quite a bit of play in that but if you got a, a high quality uh tripod you're probably not going to have that problem but i do because it's cheap and I don't even know where it came from. I think it was my wife's. And she probably had it since before we've been together. And that's a bit 15 years old. So that thing's probably 20 years old. And uh, I, I guess it's earning this keep finally. So we'll get to working on these uh, pieces of flex track here. Anytime I'm working with flex track, I always cut one tie off of each end. I've already done that, so I'll take these off. I always save these ties. I don't ever throw them away. I got a ton of them. Let me see if I can make sure the camera's right. Will you stop? Get out of my way. Go lay down. I knew it was a mistake to bring you out here, but you won't stay out of the trash and mom's mad at you and therefore it's, I'm in trouble. So whenever I'm laying a curb, I always, always take the uh, the movable rail and I keep that on the inside. I know some people that do the other way. That's not me. That's not the way I do it. So I'm showing you the way I do it. And if you don't like that, hey, then that's fine. You can stop video right now. I also have all my uh, my uh, uh, track joiners or my rail joiners already pre-cut and they're sitting here on the side. Where the nail holes are on the bottom of this uh, Atlas Flex track. I don't go through and, and uh, poke out each one. I use this little drill bit and I drill out uh, the first two 
and then I skip one, and then I skip another, and then I do the last two. That way there I got good, uh, solid support where it's secured into the road bed on each end, and then the middle side, the middle of it can flex a little bit more. So I'll do this one here real quick, and I'll show you why I do this, because I don't know anybody else who does this, but I use straight pins that you get in the, uh, like the craft section, like for sewing, and straight pins hold everything. So I use a real small drill bit, put my straight pin in, and it holds everything perfectly. Uh, these are so small that when you paint the rail, they just get painted brown and you can't even see them. Um, and then once the uh, the ballast is down and the glue and the ballast, you know, dry and everything, the rail's not going anywhere. And it still has just, just a little bit of flex, depending on how much glue you put on there. But uh, that's the way I do it. And I'll move the camera over here so you can watch me put in this piece of, of rail. I should probably turn this around so I can see what I'm doing while I'm on the camera. All right. So ensuring that the movable rails on the inside, I'll go ahead and start put on my clips, my rail joiners, if you will. I got a transition piece over here that I really should probably clean the paint off of before I do this, but we'll just test fit. This is for demonstration purposes. It'll be all right. I'll find me a good distance. I also got my center lines are already marked on there. And with these straight pins, there's two different sizes. This is, uh, I think, an inch and a quarter. I think that's what, an inch and a quarter. And then uh, there's a, a shorter one here. So I don't know if you can see those on the camera, but they're pretty different. I don't think you can see that, but oh well, you have to work with it. But basically, I just visualize it and line it up. Now, these straight pins will hurt your fingers after a while pushing them in. So, I use a uh, backside of the same marker that I drew the lines with. And I just push them down in there. You can push them down in all the way. You can leave a little bit up, you know, so you can grab them again if you got to make some adjustments. That is up to you. Now, all my tracks are two inches on center, and I like to keep it pretty close. If you get a little narrow on my layout, it's okay, but once again, if you've got sharper curves and less tolerance, you can't get away with that. That's a big gap. I'm going to have to readjust. But... And then all I do is use the center line of the foam, or not the foam, the center line of the, the cork that I put down as my guide to put the stick pins in to center the track up on the road bed. Now I'm sure that's the way everybody does it because I think that's the common sense way to do it, but I don't know. My wife says I'm special. I thought that was a good thing until recently, and then I realized that, you know, it's kind of like being in the South and they say, uh, bless your heart. Well, that really means that you're an effing retard. And uh, they're just trying to be sweet about it. So, so guys, if your wife is telling you that you're special, Scott, that's for you. And uh, just know that there's a double meaning there. And that is just how easy that is. Now, you got this little piece that, that sticks out right here. All I do is take my, my rail clippers, nippers, or whatever you want to call them. I'll eyeball it. Looks good. Boom, that's it. Throw that little piece away. Take my file. And I got these at Walmart too. This is a, I don't know whatever that Walmart tool brand is that, that they have is a, uh, that's all this is. Kind of file it a little bit, check out my fingers, check the bottom. Biggest concern is just making sure that your rail joiners slide on there. Quick test fit. Just 
this. I'll put my reading glasses on. I can see this a lot better. And that's it. So I'm good to go. So it's just that easy. It's so easy a caveman could do it. Actually, it's so easy a tanker could do it. And if you were in the army and you were a 19 kilo, you know what I'm talking about, Dwight. So other than that, I haven't done anything. Except for trim my beard up. Looks pretty good, don't it? But other than that, I haven't really been doing a whole lot to the layout that you haven't seen in the last update. I did go to Mike's Trains in uh, Thomasville, uh, North Carolina, the other day. And I picked up a bunch of flex track and a bunch of uh, road bed. And that will allow me to lay track all the way down to right about here. Which is this new 16-foot section that I built the other day. Now, I was talking the other day about putting in like a like a highway underpass here. And I was thinking about uh, moving this section down and then building a new section that just like inserted in. But uh, I've decided not to do that. All I'm going to do is just put a space in the foam and I'm going to build a bridge abutments and, and a custom bridge and basically just paint the wood to look like the road. And then the bridge will be high enough that, you know, there's plenty of clearance for cars to go underneath. And this is the same bridge that I built over on uh, the river scene uh, on the other side of the layout and the water scene that I've been working on for about a year now on the other side. Uh, well, actually in the other room, but I'll take you over there right now and show it to you. So this is one of those bridges, and I think that I, I can make this look like a, a very decent underpass with a highway underneath. It'll probably be about the same size, maybe maybe a little bit longer. I might do something a little bit wider, maybe do like a four lane. I got some old, uh, uh, the old Tyco lifelike, like plastic bridge supports that you just put the track in. I think that might be a good kit bash where I can use these I-beams and maybe put one of those, those supports here or kit bash a couple together because it's going to be three tracks wide on one section. And I, that might look okay. And that might look okay. Um, for those that don't know, the, this is just some plywood that I cut and I glued together. You can actually see a little bit of gap right there. I, that wasn't there before. But I, I paint this and I weather it up and I, I think it looks pretty good for concrete. The lighter color right here, it looks really light on the camera, but it's really not. But you can see it up underneath, you know, where this is the rust coming down off the bridge. And, um, you know, I, I did the rust, you know, uh, you know, coming down through the ties and stuff like that. But I did this scene here, and I'm probably wondering, hey, Rob, why'd you do this scene when nothing else is done over here? But I wanted to get the track in, and I wanted to get this stuff done underneath of it so that I wasn't trying to work around it at the same time. And so this little part's the only <laughs> the only little bit of scenery that I've worked on uh, on this whole section. But things are, are coming around, and... and I've said it before in other videos is I always got a lot of projects going on, but it seems like when they start to finish a project, a whole bunch of them get finished at the same time because I literally spend hours waiting for paint and decals to dry. So I'm always doing a little bit of something. I got my, I got my scenery uh, work tray here uh, all ready to go. I have not done anything over here, which, you know, putting down this ballast, this rock, you know, parking lot will only take me 10 minutes to do. I just haven't done it yet. But um, I just need to, to get off my butt and do that part. Oh, so I was at Hobby Lobby the other day with my wife. And I found some of this ground foam on the uh, clearance rack for $0.62. Cents. So I was like, hey, you know, for $0.62, cents, you can't go wrong. So I bought all three packages they had. And I would just, I'll throw that someplace, probably mix it up with some of this ground foam just to give it a little bit of, you know, a little bit of different color when I, I throw her down on the ground, but uh, we'll see. Let me take you over and show you that other bridge. Take you under the duck under. Oh. Through the curtain, it's a little chilly out here. Oh, ran into the wall. A little chilly out here, so I, I shut the curtain to keep the heat in. And we'll go over here. And for the new people who are watching, uh, thank you for watching for one. But this is the only section of the layout besides the yard that's got any scenery at all. And this is all pretty generic stuff. But it don't look too bad in the photos. So if you go to like my community part of the YouTube, uh, I've been posting photos. But I staged this train last night and took a, took a pretty neat picture. 
kind of like about this angle. I really like it. Uh, it's warming up here in North Carolina pretty good, so I think I'm going to go ahead and pour the epoxy here in about two weeks. But this is the, the other short little homemade bridge that I did. Once again, it's plywood, abutments on each side, and the same I-beam uh, on there. And I did the same thing with it, you know, making the little rust spots come down and, and everything. So... I think it's going to look okay. I think I think in the end it'll look okay, especially if I put some uh, like a little uh, like a railroad sign in the middle of the bridge, and uh, um, you know the street underneath of it and everything, and, and and like you know like what's it called the uh, the height of the bridge, you know the clearance uh, the clearance uh, sign or whatever. I think it'll make it more believable, and I think it'll look pretty good. And on top of everything else, a lot of railroads have the same bridge all over the place because you know. It saved the money from designing it. They just designed one and made it fit everywhere. So we'll figure all that out. I hope you like my, my custom painted Virginian SD40-2s. I think they look pretty good on anything. A couple of custom painted U30Bs. Hey, look at that. Allegheny Midland. And that might have been a little fast for you. But I got stuff everywhere on the layout. I haven't ran a train in a month. I've just been kind of messing with stuff and getting some stuff ready. Posing for some photos. And uh, I really enjoy taking pictures of the trains. And I, I, I didn't really care too much for it until uh, I went over to Dustin Witten's house. And he had a really nice layout. That was like two layouts ago. But he, uh, he used to stage photos and, and take pictures all the time. And... So I started doing the same thing, and then I started going to his layout, taking my engines and taking pictures and stuff. And I really got into it. I really enjoy it, and it makes me happy, I guess, that I can put together something that every now and then tricks somebody into believing it. And those woods out there are the same woods up against the wall here, because all I did was take a picture from my deck and print it off and then paste them all together. Can't tell the difference, can you? Looks real. That's Memorex. But that's all I got for today. I uh, thank everybody for watching. If you like this video, uh, feel free to subscribe. If you think my video sucks, blame it on Dwight and uh, tell him my video sucks and it's his fault in the comments. Um, like, share, uh, go watch another video and come back here in a few days and see what I talk about next. Y'all have a great day.